Insight into IELTS, the Cambridge IELTS course, by Vanessa Jakeman and Claire McDowell, published by Cambridge University Press, 1999. This recording is copyright. Side 1. Unit 1. Orientating yourself to the text. Unit 1, Extract 1. You will hear one example and then ten short conversations. As you listen, complete the table to show who the speakers are and why they are speaking. Listen to the example first. Can I help you? Yes. I'm looking for a tie for my husband. Where would I find the men's department? On the first floor. You can take the lift or the escalator. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The speakers are a sales assistant and a customer. The customer is asking where the men's department is. Now listen to the rest of the conversations and complete the table. After each conversation, you will hear this sound. Pause the tape here to allow time for writing. One. Can I take your coat? Oh, thank you. And would you like something to drink before you order your meal? Oh, um, yes, please. Can we see the wine list? Certainly. Two. Can I see your license, please, sir? Yes, sir, certainly. Did you know you were exceeding the speed limit when you came over the hill just now? Our radar registered that you were travelling at 157 kilometres an hour. Oh, really? I hadn't realised. There's an on-the-spot fine of $280 for that, I'm afraid, sir. Three. Oh, I'm afraid I got stopped by the police for speeding today, dear. Oh, no, David, you didn't, did you? <sighs> yes, I got a fine of $280 on the spot. That's dreadful. We can't afford that. You really should drive more slowly. Mm. Now, I'd just like to recap on what we were talking about last week before going ahead with this week's lecture. Uh, we were, if I remember rightly, looking at the main causes of the Second World War and I'd just like to go back to some of the points I made. Uh, but first, uh, does anyone have any questions? Five. How do I go about joining the table tennis club? You need to fill in this form and show me your student card. Is there a fee? Yes, there's a joining fee of $15 and an annual subscription of $10. Six. Uh, I'm afraid I haven't been able to finish the history essay and I was hoping that you would give me an extension. When do you think you could let me have it? Well, uh, I should be able to finish it by next Monday. Well, OK. As long as I can have it by then. Yeah, that'll be fine. Seven. Did you manage to finish the history essay? No, nah, did you? No, I couldn't find the books in the library. No, nah, neither could I. But fortunately, the lecturer has given me an extension. You should go and see her. She's very helpful. Eight. Would you like something to drink with your meal? Drinks are complimentary on this flight. I'll just have a soft drink, thanks. Can I have a Coke? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to go and get you one when I finish serving this row. Oh, OK. Nine. Morning, Mr. White. Come in. And what can I do for you today? Well, Doctor, I'm having difficulty sleeping. I often wake up at three in the morning and I just can't get back to sleep. I see. And how long has this been going on? Oh, about a month now. I wonder if you could prescribe something. Ten. Good morning, everybody. 
Now, first of all, I'd like to start by welcoming you all to the college. We're delighted to have you here, and we hope you're going to enjoy your stay with us. My name is Mary Smithers, and I'm the college principal. Unit 2. Listening for specific information. Unit 2. Extract 1. You will hear seven short answer phone messages. Listen and complete the messages on the telephone pad. A. Oh, hi everybody. It's Julia here. It's Thursday afternoon. I'm just ringing to confirm dinner on Friday night. I'll be there about 7.30. Can't wait to see you all. B. Johnson's Repairs here. Your video recorder is now ready for collection. There's a charge of £50 to be paid when you come and pick it up. C. Message for Mary Brooks. This is the university bookshop here. The book you ordered on Asian economies is not available. I'm afraid it's out of print. Sorry about that. Let me know uh, what you want us to do. D. Uh, hi, this is Nick. Um, I've left my football boots at home today and I desperately need them for the match this afternoon. Uh, if someone gets this message, could you please bring them into the college before 12 o'clock? The new boots, not the old boots. Uh, thanks a lot. See ya. E. Dr. Boyd surgery here. I'm afraid we'll have to cancel Ms. Taylor's appointment tomorrow as unfortunately Dr. Boyd has the flu. Could she come on Monday at 3.30pm instead and ring back to confirm she can make that time? F. Oh, hello. Message from Mr. Lee, Newport Supermarkets here. I believe you lost a pair of glasses yesterday. We found a pair at the checkout. We're keeping them at the customer service desk. Would you like to come in and see if they're yours? G. Hello, this is Sam. Message for Nick. We're having a farewell party for Professor Hall on Saturday. You know, he's going to China for two years. Give us a ring on 9818-4078. Unit 2, Extract 2. You will hear a tourist asking about cruises round the harbour. First, look at questions 1 to 7. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and complete questions 1 to 7 on the table. Good morning, Blue Harbour Cruises. How can I help you? Oh, um, uh, good morning. Um, can you tell me something about the different cruises you run? Well, we run three cruises every day, each offering something slightly different. Oh, let me just get a pencil so I can make a note of this. Right. Firstly, there's the highlight cruise. Then we do the noon cruise. And we also have our coffee cruise. Hmm. Could you tell me a bit about them? When they leave, how often, that sort of thing? Well, the highlight cruise is $16 per person. And that leaves at 9.30 every morning and takes two hours to go around the harbour. Right, 9.30. And do you get coffee or refreshments? No, but there's a kiosk on board where you can buy drinks and snacks. And we do provide everyone with a free souvenir postcard. Right. And then there's our noon cruise at $42 per person. Th this is more expensive, but, of course, it takes longer. And for that price, you get a three-course lunch. Oh, that sounds good. And what about the last one? That's the coffee cruise. Well, that's $25 each. It takes two and a half hours. When does that leave? At a quarter past two daily. 
And presumably the coffee is included? Yes, and sandwiches are served free of charge. Now you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. As you listen to the rest of the conversation, answer questions 8 to 10. I think the coffee cruise would suit us best, as lunch is included at the hotel. Can I book for two people for tomorrow, please? No need to book. Just be down at the quay at 2 o'clock. All our cruisers depart from jetty number 2. Can you tell me where that is exactly? Yes. Number 2 jetty is opposite the shops. It's clearly signposted. Right. And can you tell me, is there a commentary? Yes, there's a commentary on all the cruises. Is it possible to listen to the commentary in Japanese? My friend doesn't speak much English. It's in English only, I'm afraid. But the two guides usually speak some Japanese, so she'll be able to ask questions. Oh, fine. Oh, and one other thing. I should just mention that it gets extremely hot on the upper deck at this time of year, so it's a good idea to wear a hat. Otherwise, you could get quite badly sunburnt. Right, I'll remember that. Thanks very much. Unit 2. Extract 3. You will hear a man talking on the telephone, arranging to hire a car. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 10. As you listen to the conversation, complete the form by filling in the numbered spaces 1 to 5 and by circling the correct answer for questions 6 to 10. Good morning, Golden Wheels Car Rentals. How can I help you? Yes, good morning. I'd like to hire a car, please. Can I just get your name, sir? Yes. Frank Moorcroft. Oh, could you spell that, please? Yes. Frank, F-R-A-N-K, Moorcroft, M-O-O-R-C-R-O-F-T. And the address? Uh, my home address? Yes, sir. We need your home address. Oh, right. OK. Flat 26, 19 Lake Road, Richmond. And your telephone number there? Uh, 3697... Four five double O. Are you the holder of a current driver's license? Yes, I am. Could I have the number, please, sir? Uh, just let me find it. Here we are. UT nine one two eight. Right. Now, what kind of vehicle were you looking for? I was thinking of doing some off-road driving. When did you want to collect the vehicle? Tomorrow, if that's possible. Mm, tomorrow is the twenty third of June. Uh, well, all the four-wheel drives are out, but we've got a nice family-sized vehicle, a Ford. I could let you have that in the morning. Almost as good as a four-wheel drive. OK, I'll take that. What is the cost of the Ford? Well, the daily rate is $70, but it's only $50 a day if you have it for more than three days. I'll need it for the whole week. OK, and there's an additional $15 for insurance, which brings it up to $65. We do recommend that you take the insurance. Right, so that's a total of $65 a day, not $50. Yes, sir, that's correct. And would you like to collect it from our city branch or at the airport or your hotel? I can pick it up in the city. And how will you be paying for that? Cash, cheque or credit card? Uh, do you take traveller's cheques? No, sorry. I'll pay by credit card then. Right, thank you very much. We'll see you in the morning, sir. Unit 3. Identifying detail. Unit 3, Extract 1. You will hear a conversation between two friends who haven't seen each other for a long time. First, look at questions 1 to 6. For each of the questions, three alternatives are given. Decide which of the alternatives, A, B or C, best fits what you hear on the tape and circle the appropriate letter.
you will see that there's an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to the example will be played first. Hello, Sue. Fancy meeting you here. It is Sue Johnson, isn't it? Oh, hi, Jill. It must be ages since we've seen each other. <sighs> what a surprise. How are you? Yes, well, I'm fine. Just got back from two years teaching in Hong Kong, actually. I thought you'd gone into computing or nursing. No. I ended up being a teacher, after all. And how about you? Oh, fine. Things are going quite well, in fact. Jill says she was teaching in Hong Kong, so A has been circled. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to six. Hello, Sue. Fancy meeting you here. It is Sue Johnson, isn't it? Oh, hi, Jill. It must be ages since we've seen each other. <sighs> what a surprise. How are you? Yes, well, I'm fine. Just got back from two years teaching in Hong Kong, actually. I thought you'd gone into computing or nursing. No. I ended up being a teacher, after all. And how about you? Oh, fine. Things are going quite well, in fact. So, what have you been up to over the last three years? Working, studying, you know, the usual things. Oh, and I got married last year. Oh, congratulations. Anyone I know? Yeah, you might remember him from our college days. Do you remember Jerry? Jerry Fox? Jerry? Was he the one with the dark hair and beard? No, that was Sam. No, Jerry's got blonde hair and glasses. He's pretty tall. Well, we got married, finally. Great. And where did the wedding take place? Was it here in London? No, in the end, we decided to get married in Scotland. Jerry's parents lived there, so we were married in a small village church with the mountains in the background. Oh, fabulous. Mm. Have you got any pictures? Well, funny you should ask. I have actually got a couple here. They're a bit battered because I've been carrying them around in my bag. Oh, never mind. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, don't you look wonderful? Who are those people behind you? Oh, that's my older sister, Clara. Oh, she looks like you. You think so? <laughs> Everyone says that, but we can't see it. Is she married now? Yes, and she's got three children, a girl and twin boys as well. Wow, imagine having twins. <laughs> Look, why don't we have dinner together and catch up on a few things? Would you like to come over one evening? That'd be lovely. What about mm, next Friday evening? What time? Uh, shall I come over about eight o'clock? Oh, uh, come about half past seven. I'm usually home around 6.30, so that would give me plenty of time to get dinner ready. Fine. And one last thing. Where do you live? What's the address? <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> uh, here's my card. The address is on the back. We've got a flat in an old house. We live on the third floor of a large old house. The house has been converted into flats. You know, it's a typical London flat. So when you arrive, you'll need to press the bell second from the top. The bell second from the top. OK. There's a little intercom arrangement so I can let you in. Right. OK. See you on Friday, then. Mm. Unit 4. Identifying main ideas. Unit 4, extract 1. You will hear one example and then eight short conversations. Listen once and complete the introductory phrase column as you listen. First, listen to the example. Guess who I saw today? Who? I ran into our old English teacher, Mr Britton, in the supermarket. Really? Funny thing is, I didn't recognise him. He tapped me on the shoulder and I wondered who on earth it was. He's grown a beard and he looks quite different. The introductory phrase is, Guess who I saw today? Now listen and complete the first column. One. Can I help you? Yes, well, I bought this tie last week for my boyfriend's birthday and, mm -hmm. well, he doesn't like it. 
Could I change it for something else? Uh, certainly, madam, provided that it hasn't been worn and that you have the receipt. Yes, here it is. Okay. Uh, uh, this tie looks as if it's been worn, I'm afraid. I can't put that back on the rack. Oh, that's a pity. Two. You know, John, I'm getting quite worried about Maria. Why? What's happened? Well, I was speaking to her teacher today after school. She tells me that Maria often doesn't finish her homework. And when she does, well, the standard is often pretty poor. Hmm. Maybe I'd better have a word with her then. And now, closer to home and the health service. The Prime Minister announced today that the government would be looking at ways of reducing hospital waiting lists in Australian hospitals. At present, patients can wait up to two years for a hospital bed for operations not considered to be life-threatening. A spokesperson for St Michael's Hospital said some patients wait for over two years for operations such as hip replacements and other so-called minor surgery. Four. Now, about this picnic, where are we going to go? Well, I thought we might all meet up at the Opera House at two o'clock and walk through the Botanical Gardens and find a nice spot down near the water. What do you think? Great. Five. You know the computing assignment we've got? Yeah. Have you finished yours yet? No. Have you? No. That's why I asked. I'm having a lot of difficulty understanding the topic. Why don't we go and see the lecturer about it and ask him? He's a pretty friendly sort of guy. I'm sure he won't mind. Good idea. Six. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to find a copy of A Guide to English Grammar. I can't find it on the shelf. Let me have a look. It may be waiting to be put back on the shelves. Oh. Hold on a minute. Yes, it came back in this morning, but a couple of people have reserved it already. Would you like to reserve it after that? Oh, no, thanks. I think I'll go and buy a copy for myself. Seven. Hey, you guys. Could you two stop playing on the walking machine? It's not a toy, you know. Ah, uh, sorry. We were just trying it out. Isn't that what it's for? If you're not going to buy it, you shouldn't use it. Well, we don't know whether we're going to buy it if we don't try it, do we? Eight. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, family and friends, and students of this university. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you all and say how pleasing it is to see such a good turnout of parents and friends at today's graduation ceremony, which is, in my opinion, a most important day in the university calendar. Now listen again, and this time, complete the second column, Topic, and the third column, How Does the Topic Develop? We start with the example again. Guess who I saw today? Who? I ran into our old English teacher, Mr Britton, in the supermarket. Really? Funny thing is, I didn't recognise him. He tapped me on the shoulder and I wondered who on earth it was. 
He's grown a beard and he looks quite different. The topic they are talking about is meeting an old teacher. They develop the topic by talking about the teacher's appearance. Now listen and complete the rest of the table. After each conversation, you'll hear this sound. Pause the tape here to allow time for writing. One. Can I help you? Yes, well, I bought this tie last week for my boyfriend's birthday and, mm -hmm. well, he doesn't like it. Could I change it for something else? Uh, certainly, madam, provided that it hasn't been worn and that you have the receipt. Yes, here it is. Okay. Uh, uh, this tie looks as if it's been worn, I'm afraid. I can't put that back on the rack. Oh, that's a pity. Two. You know, John, I'm getting quite worried about Maria. Why? What's happened? Well, I was speaking to her teacher today after school. She tells me that Maria often doesn't finish her homework. And when she does, well, the standard is often pretty poor. Hmm. Maybe I'd better have a word with her then. Three. And now, closer to home and the health service. The Prime Minister announced today that the government would be looking at ways of reducing hospital waiting lists in Australian hospitals. At present, patients can wait up to two years for a hospital bed for operations not considered to be life-threatening. A spokesperson for St Michael's Hospital said some patients wait for over two years for operations such as hip replacements and other so-called minor surgery. Four. Now, about this picnic, where are we going to go? Well, I thought we might all meet up at the Opera House at two o'clock and walk through the Botanical Gardens and find a nice spot down near the water. What do you think? Great. Five. You know the computing assignment we've got? Yeah. Have you finished yours yet? No. Have you? No, that's why I asked. I'm having a lot of difficulty understanding the topic. Why don't we go and see the lecturer about it and ask him? He's a pretty friendly sort of guy. I'm sure he won't mind. Good idea. Six. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to find a copy of A Guide to English Grammar. I can't find it on the shelf. Let me have a look. It may be waiting to be put back on the shelves. Oh. Hold on a minute. Yes, it came back in this morning, but a couple of people have reserved it already. Would you like to reserve it after that? Oh, no, thanks. I think I'll go and buy a copy for myself. Seven. Hey, you guys. Could you two stop playing on the walking machine? Not a toy, you know. Oh, sorry. We were just trying it out. Isn't that what it's for? If you're not going to buy it, you shouldn't use it. Well, we don't know whether we're going to buy it if we don't try it, do we? Eight. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, family and friends, and students of this university. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you all and say how pleasing it is to see such a good turnout of parents and friends at today's graduation ceremony, which is, in my opinion, a most important day in the university calendar. Unit 4, Extract 2. You're going to hear a radio programme about stamp design. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. For each of the questions, three alternatives are given. Decide which of the alternatives, A, B or C, best fits what you hear on the tape and circle the appropriate letter.
Now listen to the first part of the program and answer questions one to five. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Tell Me More, the program where you ask the questions and we provide the answers. And we've had a wide variety of questions from you this week. And the subject we've picked for you this week in response to your many letters is the production of postage stamps. And as usual, we've been doing our homework on the subject. So, who designs the postage stamps that we stick on our letters? Well, in Australia, the design of postage stamps is in the hands of Australia Post. In Britain, it's the Royal Mail that looks after stamps. And it seems that both countries have a similar approach to the production process. We discovered to our surprise that it can take up to two years to produce a new postage stamp. Why is that, I hear you ask? Surely it can't be all that difficult to design a stamp. In fact, it isn't. But it seems it's a lengthy business. Firstly, they have to choose the subjects, and this is done with the help of market research. Members of the general public, including families, are surveyed to find out what sort of things they would like to see on their stamps. They are given a list of possible topics and asked to rank them. A list is then presented to the advisory committee, which meets about once a month. The committee is made up of outside designers, graphic artists and stamp collectors. If the committee likes the list, it sends it up to the board of directors, which makes the final decision. Then they commission an artist. In Australia, artists are paid $1,500 for a stamp design and a further $800 if the committee actually decides to use the design. So there's a possibility that a stamp might be designed but still never actually go into circulation. Now you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the end of the programme. As you listen, for questions 6 to 8, complete the notes in the spaces provided. And for questions 9 and 10, circle the correct answer. So, what kind of topics are acceptable? Well, the most important thing is that they must be of national interest. And because a stamp needs to represent the country in some way, Characters from books are popular, or you often find national animals and birds. So, of course, the kangaroo is a favourite in Australia. With the notable exception of members of the British royal family, no living people ever appear on Australian or British stamps. This policy is under review, but many stamp enthusiasts see good reason for keeping it that way to avoid the possibility of people in power using their influence to get onto the stamps. Every year the Royal Mail in Britain receives about 2,000 ideas for stamps, but very few of them are ever used. One favourite topic is kings and queens. For instance, King Henry VIII, famous for his six wives, has recently appeared on a British stamp together with a stamp featuring each of his wives. But despite the extensive research which is done before a stamp is produced, it seems it's hard to please everybody, and apparently all sorts of people write to the post office to say that they loved or hated a particular series. The stamp to cause the most concern ever in Australia was a picture of Father Christmas surfing at the beach. <laughs> and when you consider that the practical function of a stamp is only as a receipt for postage, I think perhaps the importance accorded to stamps has got out of all proportion. Well, that's all for today. If there's a subject you want us to tell you more about, drop us a line. Unit 5. Seeing Beyond the Surface Meaning. Unit 5, Extract 1. You will hear an example and eight short conversations. Listen 
and answer the question at the end of each conversation. Listen to the example first. Mum, what do you think of my new shirt? Do you like it? Oh, it's、uh, lovely, darling. Oh, Mum. Did the woman like the shirt? The answer is no. Now listen to the rest of the conversations and answer yes or no. One. Fantastic! This is the first day I've had off for months, and look at the weather. Would you believe it? Oh well, at least you've got the day to yourself. Never mind the weather. Is the weather fine? Two. Hi, Sue. It's Mario here. Oh, hi. How are you? Fine.、Uh, look, um, I was wondering if you were free on Saturday evening. I've got some tickets for a concert. Would you like to come? Oh, look. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd really like to, but um, like. <laughs> I'm studying for my exams at the moment, and well, I'm sorry, I I can't. Okay, um, not to worry. <laughs> Some other time then, I suppose. Right. <laughs> sure. Is the girl trying to avoid the date? Three. I bought this mobile phone on Friday. Is there a Problem with it, sir? Well, primarily, it does not appear to function outside the metropolitan area, which means it fails to function as a mobile phone, as far as I can see. Right. I'll just have a word with the manager and see what we can do. Was the man satisfied with the phone? Four.、Uh, excuse me, minister. Can you tell us whether your government intends to increase student university fees in the next budget?、Uh, the government has every intention of ensuring that students will not be disadvantaged by any increase in fees, which it may be necessary to introduce, by offering grants and scholarships to students wherever possible. Are university fees going to rise? Five. I've just ordered a new MMX computer with 32-speed CD-ROM. I'm getting it tomorrow. That's great. It's twice the speed of the one we've got now, and much better for games. Can't wait to see it. Does the woman want to see the computer? Six. What did the doctor have to say? Well, she said if I want to get rid of this flu. I should stay in bed for the next three days, drink plenty of orange juice, and stay nice and warm. That means you'll miss your football on Saturday. No, I should be okay by Saturday. Oh, okay. Too sick for school, but okay for football, eh? Mum, that's not fair. Is the boy very sick? Seven. I've just seen the new Bond movie. Have you? I saw it on Saturday. Wasn't it fabulous? Didn't you just love the special effects? Yeah, they weren't bad. It was okay. Did the woman like the movie? Eight. Michael, did you do this work yourself? Yes, sir. Of course I did. It seems to have been remarkably well done for you. Guess I had a good day, sir. Michael. I wasn't born yesterday. No, sir. Is the teacher pleased with the boy's work? Unit five, extract two. You will hear a conversation between three friends who live in a student house together: Richard, Sue, and Frank. They are having a conversation about how the government should spend public money. Task one: As you listen, complete the grid by placing a tick in the box next to the name of each speaker each time they speak.
Which of them speaks most often? Sue, who was that at the door? Oh, someone collecting money for the local hospital again. Did you give them anything? No, Frank, I did not. I refuse to give money at the door to people. It annoys me the way they come round here on Sunday morning expecting us to donate money all the time. <laughs> well, they're hardly likely to come round during the week, are they? Because anybody who can afford to donate money will be out at work. Anyway, Sue, I think they just make you feel guilty. Richard, I beg your pardon. You don't want to give any money, so you turn the situation round and blame them for knocking on your door. Richard, that's not true. I'm happy to give money, but through the official channels. I just don't like people coming to my door. Well, I tend to agree with Sue. I don't see why we should have to pay for the new hospital out of our pockets. We already pay our taxes. Income tax, purchase tax, you name it, tax. The government should pay for the hospital out of general revenue, not the local residents. Yeah, that's right. I mean, perhaps we don't need a hospital in this area anyway. Why can't people go to the general hospital in town? They've got all the facilities there. Ah, but Sue, the day you need a hospital, you want it there, ready and waiting for you, close to home, not miles away. And besides, other people may not be able to travel into town like you. Old people, people without cars. Oh, and, you know. Frank, you know what I mean. Anyway, I still think that the government should pay for this kind of thing. Ah, that's because you've grown up in a system where the state does everything for you from the cradle to the grave. But it doesn't work like that anymore. <laughs> the party's over, I'm afraid, because there simply isn't enough money left in the bank to pay for all this stuff. You see, we're in Yes, a but most of the time they waste it. I mean, look at how much government money is spent on roads, on airports, on huge hotels, on space research, for instance, instead of on local social issues. If they well, were... I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't agree with you there. Firstly, hotels are built privately with private money, not government money. And as for space research, well, I think it's incredibly important. Why, Frank? Tell me, why is space research so important? Because it's pushing back the frontiers of science, quite literally. And also because you get some fantastic discoveries made as a result of this kind of research, and they have an immediate effect on our day-to-day -day lives. Mm, such as non-stick Teflon frying pans. Well, well, yes, but there are other much more relevant examples. High-speed aircraft, for instance, the navigational equipment, the thermal clothing, all sorts of things. Oh, nice to think that your up-to-date skiing clothes were originally designed for astronauts. Oh, yeah. Richard, you're such a cynic. <laughs> well, you guys can laugh, but I bet you by the year 2050, people will actually be shooting off to Mars on their holidays to get away from it all. Oh, no thanks, not me. You think I'm joking, don't you? The next great explorers of this world will be the astronauts. People with vision and courage to try and find new territories. You think it's just science fiction, but it isn't. It's real. Well, I still think the government would be better advised to target some of the problems on this Earth before they go shooting off to Mars. How can we possibly talk about space travel when there's youth unemployment, crime, poverty? That's where our energy should be going, into making sure that people have a roof over their heads and employment, because work gives people a sense of self. No one wants to be on the receiving end of charity all the time. Here we go again. Lots of fine ideals, but Richard, at the end of... Richard, you have to have ideals. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, I agree with Sue. I think she's right. I don't know, you see. I get a funny feeling. Task two. You're going to hear the extract again. First, look at questions one to eight. For each of the questions, four alternatives are given. Listen and decide which of the alternatives, A, B, C or D, best fits what you hear on the tape. And circle the appropriate letter. Sue, who was that at the door? Oh, uh, someone collecting money for the local hospital again. Did you give them anything? No, Frank, I did not. I refuse to give money at the door to people. It annoys me the way they come round here on Sunday morning expecting us to donate money all the time. <laughs> well, they're hardly likely to come round during the week, are they? Because anybody who can afford to donate money will be out at work. Anyway, Sue, I think they just make you feel guilty. Richard, I beg your pardon? You don't want to give any money, 
So you turn the situation round and blame them for knocking on your door. Richard, that's not true. I'm happy to give money, but through the official channels. I just don't like people coming to my door. Well, I tend to agree with Sue. I don't see why we should have to pay for the new hospital out of our pockets. We already pay our taxes. Income tax, purchase tax, you name it, tax. The government should pay for the hospital out of general revenue, not the local residents. Yeah, that's right. I mean, perhaps we don't need a hospital in this area anyway. Why can't people go to the general hospital in town? They've got all the facilities there. Ah, but Sue, the day you need a hospital, you want it there, ready and waiting for you, close to home, not miles away. And besides, other people may not be able to travel into town like you. Old people, people without cars. Oh, and, you Frank, you know what I mean. Anyway, I still think that the government should pay for this kind of thing. Ah, that's because you've grown up in a system where the state does everything for you from the cradle to the grave. But it doesn't work like that anymore. <laughs> the party's over, I'm afraid, because there simply isn't enough money left in the bank to pay for all this stuff. You see, we're in Yes, a but most of the time they waste it. I mean, look at how much government money is spent on roads, on airports, on huge hotels, on space research, for instance, instead of on local social issues. If they well, were... I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't agree with you there. Firstly, hotels are built privately with private money, not government money. And as for space research, well, I think it's incredibly important. Why, Frank? Tell me, why is space research so important? Because it's pushing back the frontiers of science, quite literally. And also because you get some fantastic discoveries made as a result of this kind of research, and they have an immediate effect on our day-to-day -day lives. Mm, such as non-stick Teflon frying pans. Uh, well, yes, but there are other much more relevant examples. High-speed aircraft, for instance, the navigational equipment, the thermal clothing, all sorts of things. Oh, nice to think that your up-to-date skiing clothes were originally designed for astronauts. Oh, yeah. Richard, you're such a cynic. <laughs> well, you guys can laugh, but I bet you by the year 2050, people will actually be shooting off to Mars on their holidays to get away from it all. Oh, no thanks, not me. You think I'm joking, don't you? The next great explorers of this world will be the astronauts. People with vision and courage to try and find new territories. You think it's just science fiction, but it isn't. It's real. Well, I still think the government would be better advised to target some of the problems on this Earth before they go shooting off to Mars. How can we possibly talk about space travel when there's youth unemployment, crime, poverty? That's where our energy should be going, into making sure that people have a roof over their heads and employment, because work gives people a sense of self. No one wants to be on the receiving end of charity all the time. Here we go again. Lots of fine ideals, but Richard, at the end of... Richard, you have to have ideals. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, I agree with Sue. I think she's right. I don't know, you see. I get a funny feeling. End of side one.